Hi there! Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia for episode 284. Today is Wednesday, May 31st, 2023, the last day for the month of May, which is insane. Brian and I are back from our amazing trip to Norway. I did post photos on Facebook. You can see those either on my personal profile or my The Paper Pixie business page. I posted about 50 photos or so and added captions so you all knew where we were and when. And some of the fun and exciting things that happened as being part of the Stampin' Up! incentive trip. Less than 1% of demonstrators earned the incentive trip and it was an amazing experience to be with 305 other demonstrators and their guests on a ship of, what was it, almost 4,000 people, I believe. So anyways, I'll tell you a little bit about the trip at the end. Feel free to ask me any questions. Quickly, let me show you what we're making tonight. I've got a really cool gatefold card. We're using the Stargazing Suite tonight and a quick and easy half sheet gift box. So, Brian, are you ready for your cameo? Brian is here watching for your questions and comments. If you do have a question tonight, be sure to put a cue in front of that question that will make it into my cue as I do the Q&A at the end of the live stream. We save your questions for the end so that I can focus on demonstrating tonight's projects from start to finish. I'm excited about this suite because it's super, super cute and I love the colors in it. I'm a brights girl and this has a lot of bright colors in it. So I do have a little bit of show and tell to share with you tonight. Some of the swag, oh wait, hold on, it's not show and tell time yet. <laughs> when you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. I just ask that you use my current host code on orders under $150 to earn your Pixie Perks. The easiest way to do that is to use my shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto magically add my current host code for you. If your order is 150 or more, don't add the host code because you'll earn stampin' rewards on that order. It's like having your own party, you earn stampin' rewards. You will also earn Pixie Perks from me as well. We have a couple of fun things coming up for the month of June. We have a designer series paper sale, which I've just returned from Norway and I'm not sure exactly which select designer series papers are. I think I counted them. There's 13 of them, I believe. The designer series paper I'm using tonight, the stargazing, I believe that's part of the sale, but correct me if I'm wrong. So we've got 15% off select designer series papers from the annual catalog for the whole month of June. And then there's a fantastic starter kit special that starts in June as well. You get an additional $30 in product. So it's $155 in product for $125. Nope, it's $155 for $99. Normally it's $125 for $99. That is going to be during the month of June. Now we do have some online ex exclusive products that are coming in the month of July. But as a demonstrator perk, you can pre-order products from the online exclusives. And that's something you might be able to add to your starter kit next month. So keep those in mind. Let me switch to, you see my little notes with my measurements here. Sneak peek there. I, this is how I packed my swag. So on the cruise ship, we cruised through the, fixing my floor mat here, we cruised through the Norwegian fjords. We flew into Heathrow, London Heathrow, and then we uh, sailed out of the Southampton port, about 90 minutes from Heathrow Airport. And on the ship, Stampin' Up! had a hospitality suite for us. We could visit any time during the day where we could spin a wheel for prizes. So these are prizes and things. I got to pick out this knit cap. It was one of the prizes I won one of the days. So lots of very cool logo items. So this is actually a towel holder for a beach chair. How cool is that? We didn't spend any time at the pool. It was a little chilly. And then we got these magnetic clips. So magnets on the back, but that would be a cute way to hold maybe my favorite pattern of designer series paper, or you could use it as a chip clip or something like that. So I got those things. Let's see. I got a phone lanyard. I actually didn't try this out, but there was, I, I think I spun the wheel and won this the day after I could have really used it. We were in um, Haugesund and it was so windy. I was so worried every time I was taking photos with my phone that I was, the wind was gonna take it away from me. But 
This is a really cool lanyard. Probably would be something cool to have like if you're at the beach or something. But so that wraps around your cell phone. I love the logo stuff. I got a sticker. <laughs> I got coasters. Let's see. These are cute. We love the felt coasters. They just say stamping up on them and a cute little muslin bag. And let's see, this was another thing I got spinning the wheel on the first day. Really, really cute donkey there. And then let's see, I got the sweet swap from, oh, I cannot remember her name, but it's evasionscreatives.com. This was outside my stateroom door. I thought that was so sweet. Well, I'll share which room we were in. This is from my accountability buddy, Pip Todman, Flipping Love You. And it's this cute little ceramic penguin. Look how cute that is. Oh, I love it. I love the sentiment. Flipping Love You. <laughs> and then my dear upline, Brian King, made this awesome clear block for me with my logo. How sweet is that? I love that. So I will proudly display that in my craft room. That's all I got in the bag here. So let me clean that up and we're gonna jump into tonight's projects. We've been back since late Sunday night, right? Well, it felt like late because we got we landed in Atlanta, which is where we live, at six, and we didn't actually walk through the front door until 9.30 <laughs> because we decided to do global entry and it took 45 minutes for that interview and then one shuttle and then another shuttle, so yeah. It was crazy. But anyways, we're happy to be home. It was a great, sweet reunion with the kiddos on uh, Monday morning and with Kona. So we're happy to be home and sleeping in our own bed, but we had the trip of a lifetime. So, all right. So these are tonight's projects. I wanted to show you again. This is a really cool fun fold. It's so easy. Now fold it up. It folds flat and it will fit into an envelope. I got this idea from a team project from my upline, Brian King, uh, but I love this. Now, the width of it is actually four inches instead of four and a quarter, and that's just the way that it lines up in the back here, and that gives you a little bit of extra wiggle room if you add some extra layers, because you do have one, two, three, like three layers of cardstock here. This is the thick basic white. But what's really cool about the card is the recipient can prop it up on their desk. Now, of course, you're looking at that from the top down, but they'll be able to put that on display, maybe in their office or on their mantle. And on the back, I just added the sentiment from this bundle, if I had a star for every time you brightened my day, I'd have an entire galaxy. So let me show you really quickly in the catalog. It is the Stargazing Suite, which we will find on pages 86 and 87. I love the bright colors of this suite. If you purchase the suite collection, it's $75.50 US, and you get the Reach for the Stars bundle, which is a stamp and die bundle, the Stargazing 12 by 12 designer series paper, which let me show you my little swatch book from Brian King here. Gorgeous colors together. The really cool thing about this paper is you can cut planets from these patterns as well as the two patterns that have the big um, sort of designed planets there. You've got galaxies. It's just really, really pretty. And these colors are gorgeous together. Basic black, berry burst, blackberry bliss, blueberry bushel, crushed curry, flirty flamingo, fresh freesia, lemon lime twist, night of navy, orchid oasis, pumpkin pie, starry sky, and Tahitian tide. That helps me get ready to not mess up my words on the live stream. I feel like I'm doing those uh, vocal warm-ups when I read out the alliterative colors. So pages 86 to 87, I love this suite. I did take a little bit of inspiration from the samples in the catalog for layouts on tonight's projects. The other beautiful thing is the holographic paper. It's three different patterns. You get two each. So it's six 12 by 12 sheets. And I don't know if I have those. As you can tell, there's a hot mess behind me, but this is one of the sheets, not to make you too dizzy. I just totally made Brian dizzy. But isn't that really pretty? You're catching the glimpse of the lights, but it almost looks tie-dye. Uh, but it's holographic depending on the colors that it picks up in the light. There's a one that it kind of uh, ombres from berry burst to starry sky i think it's beautiful and then one that's just a, uh doesn't have a pattern to it like this one has a little it's not a texture but it's just the way that that holographic paper is printed 
shows that a little bit of texturing where this is more smooth. But I love that. If you get, again, the sweet, you get the bundle, the DSP, and the specialty paper, okay? So why don't we go ahead and do our fun fold card first. And what's really great about these two projects is the thick basic white, all you're gonna need is one sheet of thick basic white because each of these start with a five and a half by eight and a half piece of cardstock. Okay, so this is our thick. I love this for card bases as well as boxes. So thick basic white. And again, we're gonna start with five and a half by eight and a half. Okay, I'm gonna bring in the Simply Score. Grab your scoring tool of choice here. Let me get my notes ready. All right, so I do like to have the score lines going sort of in the right direction. I'll kind of explain it as I go. But the first score line we're gonna do at two inches. And again, this is along the long side. So along the eight and a half inch side, first score line at two. Then I'm gonna flip. And the next two score lines we're gonna do kind of on the back side of the paper. And that's gonna be at three and one eighth and five and three eighths. Okay, so we did two, flipped, then three and one eighth, five and three eighths. I'm gonna flip again and do six and a half. So then your score lines are gonna look like that if the light picks it up. There we go. So you can see you've got uh, valley score lines on the outside lines and mountain score lines in the middle. And that's just that the way we're gonna fold our cardstock. All right, so essentially here's sort of the rule of thumb with scoring and folding. You wanna turn your valley score line into a mountain fold. So I'm gonna take this, which is a valley, and I'm gonna turn that into a mountain like so and burnish. Okay, the next one we're taking, it, it's a mountain. We're gonna turn it into a valley. So we're folding it the other way. Same thing, next one, turn that into a valley. And then the last one, turning that into a mountain. So when you're done, you're gonna have paper that looks like this, okay? So the part that sticks out, this is our front here. And then that's gonna fold flat. I do like to come in and kind of burnish again. It's gonna naturally want to sort of bounce out a little bit here, like it's not gonna lay completely flat. It may after a while of kind of like playing around with it and breaking down the paper fibers even more, but I do like the way that it pops out a little bit because then it's ready to stand on the recipient's surface, okay? So next we're gonna do designer series papers. And you can have fun picking patterns here. If stargazing isn't your thing, uh, you can do this with any of our designer series papers. And remember, many of them will be 15% off starting tomorrow. So I've got two with the planet patterns. These measure five and a quarter by one and three quarters. And this is in portrait. And then I have one, this beautiful green pattern, which is gonna be our center, center panel here. That's five and a quarter by two, okay? Again, if that were a directional pattern, you'd want it to be portrait. So I'm gonna grab liquid glue here and glue our panels down. Now again, you want the center section kind of sticking up like that. And then you know that that's the side you're going to adhere the DSP to. These little one, I think they're one and an eighth inch sections. Let's see, yep. The one and an eighth inch sections here, we're gonna leave white. We're not gonna add any paper to that. Felt good to be back crafting again. All right, and then you're gonna have about an eighth of an inch of the white peeking behind the designer series paper. That really makes this darker paper pop. Brian and I are still dealing, still dealing with some jet lag. So around this time of night, I get really tired, but you all energize me. <laughs> Um, but we're trying really hard to stick to our U.S. schedule, um, powering through it and staying it up to our normal time and then going to bed. So we're getting through it. Hopefully we'll be good by the weekend. We've got um, Brian's brother is getting married this weekend 
in Wilmington, North Carolina. So we're headed to celebrate that. All right, and then this one right in the center. I kind of chose, I mean, it's not muted because it's that beautiful lemon lime twist, but I chose this pattern for the middle because that's gonna be where we put sort of our design elements in the front and then the busier ones on the sides. Little design tip there for you. Now we're gonna do a little bit of stamping. Now I had to break out the Stamparatus because I was having such a hard time at getting the sentiment stamp um, in the right spot. So I just was like, oh, forget it. I'm just gonna use my stamp positioning tool. So the Stamparatus is discontinued, but there are many choices of stamp positioning tools out there. Even the stamp -a jig if you still have that from back in the day, you might still be able to purchase something like that at the uh, craft stores. I have fallen in love with stamp positioning tools, so I'm not even sure I'll go back to my stamp -a jig but um, we're gonna use that tonight for the sentiment. So a little bit of stamping. We're gonna stamp our astronaut here. Uh, let's see. I was in a frenzy creating today, so I've got a big mess behind me, but I think I can find everything. <laughs> All right, so we've got Starry Sky, which I love this blue. And let me get a scrap piece of white. There's this guy. Now this is a pretty big stamp, so I'm gonna go ahead and ink up the astronaut this way by taking ink, and I put my finger right in the ink there, taking ink to stamp. And I can also see if I've got good ink coverage here. There we go. Really, really sharp ink. I love this color. Let's see if we got it good. There we go. Love the detail on the astronaut there. We'll bring this ink pad out in a bit. All right, so we're gonna do some die cutting, but I want to sort of maximize the trips through the machine. I'm just gonna trim this piece down so that I have get some space on my cutting plates. All right, so we're gonna die cut the astronaut. And then we've got these really cool pieces in the dies, which let me show you a little bit more with the stamp set in the dies. I've not even had a chance to put this on a magnet card yet, but here's the stamp set. I love that. This card would be great with the spaceship as well. Is that called a spaceship? It is, right? What are they, like, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm blaming it on uh, jet lag. But what I love about this is it comes with all these circles too. So don't overlook our dies. You might, some of you might been, have thought, well, I don't know about this set. Well, you've got all these layering circles that come with it, which are great for the planets and, you know, circles for all kinds of things. So we've got the circles and you got one, two, three, four, five, six circles. You've got these cool sort of accessory dies here. These are going to give texture. They don't cut. Then you've got the flames for the spaceship. Um, and then we've got this really cool sort of Saturn rings. There's two of those. I'm not sure where the other one is, but there's, there's a smaller version as well. So, all right, so I'm gonna get the holographic paper. I've got a strip here. This is that really pretty holographic. I'm just gonna trim again a smaller piece. I like to kind of cut these smaller pieces so I can fit as much as I can on one trip through the machine. And then I already started kind of cutting into this pattern of paper. Um, with these planets, obviously you can do layers like this, or you can use those circle dies to cut all of these out. So um, what you'll notice is the dies don't perfectly cut out. You've got a little bit of wiggle room here, so you, uh, you don't have to perfectly line it up. But I'm just kind of coming in here and cutting in between planets. We're going to do the, the uh, blue one for this tonight's card. And I'm just going to kind of gingerly cut around so I can save all the rest of the planets for other projects. Like so, okay? All right, so we're going to do three pieces we're going to die cut here. Let me grab some new post-it tape. Probably gonna need a couple pieces here. 
I do like to just anchor the die to the paper so it doesn't slip and slide on me. And then this guy. Making sure that's lined up. Love our dies because you can kind of see exactly where. All right, so we're going to run those three through the machine. Make room for the stamp and cut and emboss machine. And these guys should all fit. We'll see if our machine makes noise today. Yeah, the plates are. There we go. Now you'll notice, at least for me, my holographic paper is sticking to the plate. So one of the things you can do is you could use your take your pick tool, but I also kind of like to just bend my plate a little bit so I can get my thumb underneath there. Of course, it's not working while I'm live. There we go, like so, okay. <laughs> Sticking to it, I don't know why. Your plates are embarrassing. My plates aren't, yeah. Brian just said my plates are embarrassing. They are, but they still work. Well, I'm the one that uses these plates, so they're not as perfect as your plates. <laughs> your perfectly flat plates, is that why you're saying mine are horrible? Oh yeah. Oh, and of course, that one didn't cut all the way through. So hold on. We'll run that through one more time. I wonder why. <laughs> Could you hear him on the mic? He goes, I wonder why. Because my plates are warped. <laughs> we survived the cruise ship. <laughs> Just the two of us. No, I'm kidding. Ugh. There were no stamping and cut emboss machine plates. There were no d cutting plates involved on the ship. I'm joking. All right, there we go. We've freed the planet. Saved the planet, right? If you're not careful, I'm gonna hire you to do all my die cutting. <laughs> All right, so let's bring all our pieces and parts in here. Saving that post-it tape for more stuff. Use it until it either gets torn apart or doesn't stick anymore. But look at that, I love the astronaut. That's right, Judy says I'm saving money. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. <laughs> Okay, so um, for this part, I like to, um, we're going to put the planet, I love how the, these uh, rings work. You can put the planet right in there. And what I like to do is to take glue, I'm going to do the top part first, kind of holding it where I want it, and then I'm going to come in with liquid glue. This is how I did it. There may be an easier way, but I'm, gonna, I'm holding the bottom side here with my middle finger or any free finger. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of liquid glue right on the rings and then press down. Okay, and kind of let that stick. Now, if you're heavy with the glue, you can use the silicone craft mat underneath, which I didn't see it earlier, <laughs> but there it is. So now that is stuck to the top. Then I can flip this over and then lift up the planet again. Just put a little bit of adhesive and I'll just show you what I'm doing there. Just putting a little bit of adhesive there under the rings or onto the rings. And so then we've got our planet, which I love that. It changes colors with the light. All right. I'm going to go ahead and bring in our card here. This was kind of fun to create a little vignette here. And I'm going to put the planet sort of centering the circle left to right on that middle panel, but then putting the rings at an angle. I like to eyeball it first and then... Just going to come in with a little bit of liquid glue, making sure they're on the rings and the planet. And then just going to layer that. Did I go up that far before? There we go. 
like that. I'll just kind of hold that in place. You want to make sure not to put adhesive underneath the outside edge of the ring. So make sure you kind of stick to the center there because those are going to hang off the edges like that. Okay. Then we've got our astronaut, which I think I'm going to put him. Let's go like that. Him or her. We don't know if it's a boy or a girl, do we? Um, I'm not going to put liquid glue underneath the hand because I want to tuck my sentiment underneath the hand there. I'm going to go like this, hanging off a little bit. Kind of balance it. All right, so let's go ahead and stamp the sentiment. And that's one piece I didn't cut yet. So, basic white, I'm gonna do three quarters of an inch. by two and three quarters. So three quarters by two and three quarters. Now this was just kind of trial and error figuring out the measurements here. I'm going to cut two just in case I goof. Um, I've got a couple of those. I'm going to bring in my Stamparatus, which ahead of time I set up the sentiment. So this is just something that you'll want to do when you're creating this project. I wanted, because this is a tiny piece of cardstock that we're trying to stamp on, I kind of place this in the center and usually I kind of come down to the three inch, like th three inch uh, horizontal line and then two inches in, just kind of where I place that lower left corner. I started that way and then just putzed around with a couple of um, scrap pieces until I got my sentiment lined up. So now, with my Tahitian Tide ink pad, this was one where the ink is really, really juicy. Um, I haven't replaced it. I haven't needed to replace it. I'm just going to show you a couple of tips and tricks. So you've got an ink pad that's really juicy or seems to be over inked. Um, I like to take either the back of a plastic spoon or uh, um, a used gift card or expired credit card or... If you had the palette knives from our embossing paste, I just keep this at my um, craft station. I just kind of press the ink into the ink pad. Kind of go right to left, top to bottom. And that just kind of presses any excess ink into the ink pad. If it's really extra juicy, you could kind of mop up the ink, although I hate to waste ink that way. Um, but sometimes that's the only thing that you can do and I would use just a lint free cloth for that. But this usually helps kind of pressing the ink into the ink pad. And I didn't lose a lot of ink on my little palette knife. But then that way, this isn't going to be too juicy to stamp. And with a stamp positioning tool, you can make sure that you get a really clear and crisp sentiment. All right, let's do that one more time. Sometimes with these bold greetings, I like to stamp it twice. I'm a little tight with the magnet there, so I probably should have pulled it off to the side. But there we have our sentiment. Greetings, friend. And then I'm gonna come in, you can either use your scissors or I'm gonna use the tag or the the banners pick a punch. I'm so used to saying the tag topper punch to do banner ends. I'm gonna feed that in. It's three quarters of an inch in width, but I do like to flip to the back and just make sure that that's centered before I punch. And you make some paper confetti while you do it, which is the fun part of crafting. Kind of get these little geometric pieces that pop out. So there we go, we've got our sentiment. And again, I lined that up ahead of time. That helps, especially if you're gonna make multiples uh, to get that lined up right where you want it. Those stamp positioning tools, again, are great. If you've got a little bit of trouble with an ink pad, it gives you a chance to get good, good ink coverage. So we're gonna actually adhere that right underneath the sentiment so it looks like he's holding it. And again, this was inspiration from the catalog. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna put liquid glue on the back of the left side because the right side of our tag is sticking out. I'm gonna kind of 
get his hand lifted up here. Let's see, let me take your pick tool. I don't wanna get glue where I don't want it. There we go, just lifting up his hand a little bit. And I'm gonna place that there. Now I want the sentiment to be horizontal to the bottom. There's that, and then I think it needed a little bit of bling. So I'm gonna take a large rhinestone and just add that right, oops, right up here on the planet. A little bit of glimmer, look at that. So fun, the best part of this card is the fun fold for sure. But you can have so much fun creating sort of a focal point on this fun fold, uh, cause you know that the recipient's gonna display that card. now. I totally forgot, and we're not going to do it on tonight's live stream, but I did forget to stamp the sentiment. So what I would recommend, stamp that before you add all of your embellishments, because now I can't do that, but that just leaves me more room <laughs> to write a note to the recipient. So there you go. But this sentiment will fit uh, from the stamp set in between the score lines there. So kind of a great sentiment from the suite. Okay, so that is our... Fun fold card. We've got one with the pink and one with the blue. And I love the way that those look. Bold, bold um, astronauts there too. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and move into the half sheet gift box. Again, this is a half sheet, so just use the other half of the cardstock if you're making both of tonight's projects. Sorry, I'm encroaching on your space here. So again, thick basic white. And we're gonna go ahead, let me flip to that page as well. We're going to go ahead and score. So along the eight and a half inch side, again, half sheet, so five and a half by eight and a half. On the eight and a half inch side, we're going to score this at three, four, seven, and eight. I'm going to turn it clockwise. That's just so that this will look like the template. And I'm going to score at one inch, four inches, and five inches. So it's really easy measurements. Again, on the eight and a half inch side, three, four, seven, and eight. Turn clockwise, one, four, and five. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish. I can find my uh, bone folder. <laughs> it has sprouted legs and walked away. Oh, that's funny. I literally just had it. <laughs> oh, I found it. Hiding behind my ruler, which I'm always looking for. <laughs> oh. Oh, Gregor's is on. <laughs> All right, so let me bring in the template. I feel like I'm losing my pieces here. All right, so here's the template. Now I've done a box similar to this. The finished dimensions of this one are three, let's see, height, width, depth. Three by three by one. I've done a box that is three and one eighth by three and one eighth by seven eighths. It's also a half sheet box that fits, uh, I sized it to fit the icebreakers mints. So this is just a fun um, differentiation on that project. That one actually the top flap tucks into the back. On this one, this is actually gonna tuck into the front. So a little bit of a minor difference there. If you prefer to have the flap tuck into the back, you would just swap these two panels basically. So leave this one, but cut that one away. So you've got options based on your preferences. So I'm gonna start by uh, along the bottom and I like to flip it to the other side. I know that may confuse some of you because the template goes a different way. For some reason I'm, on my eyes, it's easier to see the score lines from the back. So with the one inch section along the bottom, I'm gonna cut up each of the vertical score lines and stop at the first horizontal. And we're actually gonna come in and miter cut and remove this lower left corner. 
When I say miter cut, I just cut off a little bit of an angle on that piece. Just keeps our edges out of the way. Then I'm gonna come in and just do a quick miter cut here, just while we're there, so that we're gonna have this tab this sort of miter cut on both sides, okay? Now I'm gonna turn it to, now putting the top at the bottom where we have, we have the two rows, there's a half inch and a one inch. Same thing, I'm gonna cut up each of the vertical score lines, but this time I'm gonna stop at the second horizontal. Now this will remove that corner section and then just keep moving on down the line. All right, so I'm just looking at the template here to make sure I don't cut away the wrong thing. So this is what we're gonna leave. That's gonna be the top to fit in. So I'm gonna fold that out of the way because we're keeping that, okay? This one, we're just gonna remove that small half inch section and leave the tab behind. Fold that guy out of the way. I'm gonna remove these two sections completely. I'm just gonna cut along that second score line here. And if you have a hard time cutting a straight line here, feel free to use your paper trimmer. And then again, I'm gonna remove that little half inch section here. All right, so we're getting close there, okay? Now these two tabs, we're gonna go ahead and miter cut. I forgot to do those on the bottom as well. Okay, and then I'm gonna fold these big sections up on the bottom to isolate those two tabs. I'm gonna come in and miter cut those as well. All right, like so. Now the last thing we'll need to do is round the corners of the top flap so we don't have any trouble with that tucking into the box. Just grab your favorite corner rounder. Mine is the detailed trio, but of course it's retired. Isn't that what always happens to our favorites? Or at least we feel that way, don't we? There's always new and better products that come out, but some of the, there's some things I keep in perma stash. All right, so now that looks just like our template, and we can start to put our designer series paper next. All right, so for the DSP, and I'm missing a piece, I think. One, two, three, four, there we go. All right, so I have got from the, I had to check the name again, the Stargazing Designer Series paper and the beautiful Galaxy print. I have two pieces that measure two and three quarters by two and three quarters. Those are square, so it doesn't matter with directional. Then for the narrower pieces, these measure uh, two and three quarters by three quarters. Now, if you're using a directional pattern, you need two of them to be portrait and one to be landscape. Okay, but again, this one doesn't matter because it's not a directional paper. Let's go ahead and do the big squares first. And I'm going to go ahead and just use liquid glue here. And again, you got an eighth of an inch of the white peeking out behind that beautiful dark paper. Oops, went a little cattywampus on me there. All right, so these two sections on either side of the squares, those are gonna get the vertical pieces. Right, it's always easier for me to line these up horizontally. There we go. 
And then the third piece is going to be vertical if you had a directional pattern. I'm sorry, horizontal if you had a directional pattern. We're going to put that right there on the lid. It's always easier to put the designer series paper down first before you glue the box. There we go. All right, one thing before we glue this together, I need to do a little finger notch here. And I've just got a half inch circle punch. You can find these on Amazon. This is retired from Stampin' Up. But I'm just gonna put a little finger notch there, like so. And that will leave a little bit of space for the recipient to open the box. All right, so now it's time to glue this baby together. I'm gonna flip it to the back and fold on the second score line from the left. And then put liquid glue on that half inch section. Then you're going to fold in the first score line from the right using our score lines to square everything up. Like so. Okay. Now with the way I designed this box, where the finger notch is, that's the front. So it's just important to kind of keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and now glue the bottom. So finger notch is the front. That will be the last flap that we put down. So put the little tabs in and put liquid glue on those. I like to kind of keep them in place. And then liquid glue on the front, like that, okay? Now I've kind of folded my tabs and the lid out of the way to give me kind of a flat surface to work with. I'm gonna fold the back flap over the tabs and then the front flap over the back flap. And because I'm using liquid glue, I can just kind of slide things into place here on the bottom, using my fingers kind of pressing on the corners there. And you can only go so far pressing from the bottom. So I like to take my bone folder or this glue bottle actually fits inside the box. And I'm just using the work, my table surface and the glue bottle to kind of press everything down into place from the inside. Okay. So put the tabs in and then we're going to go ahead and tuck in the flap. Now, if you've got something, this one is a good example. This isn't quite fitting in. So I was a little heavy handed or I didn't quite cut enough off. You can see right here, there's a little bit of excess cardstock. I just kind of come in and take a little bit of a sliver off. Don't take off too much. It's always easier to take off more if you need to. And then that should fit. There we go. Not pretty with the white base. I love the way that that looks with that dark paper. Now we're gonna do a little bit of decorating for the front, a little bit of a similar layout. We're gonna do a planet and the Saturn rings and then a cute sentiment and a little uh, faux bow, I like to call it behind the sentiment. Again, some inspiration from the samples in the kit or in the catalog. Ooh, my, my words are getting mixed. All right, so again, we're gonna cut rings. It's gonna be like deja vu again. And do that. Then I'm going to use the green paper and cut the circle as opposed to cutting out a planet from the planet pattern. I'm going to do that. And I think I just have these two to do. I'm just going to trim the excess off here. So those two through the machine. See if I can get these to cut all the way through with my beautiful plates. <laughs> well loved plates. Brian can't even look, can you? <laughs> We're going to go back and forth just in case. So good. All right, my bending of the plate didn't work so well last time, so I'll use my take your pick tool. I just love those rings and that paper is gorgeous. All right. I'm gonna bring in the silicone mat again. We'll build our little planet here. Just love how that layers together. Liquid glue. You 
again, kind of holding the rings in place on the bottom. I should have people post pictures of their plates and say who, whose plates are the worst. <laughs> Ooh, flip it over. Just anchoring our planet here with the rings. There we go. All right, so we're gonna pop this on the front. Now there is space for you to put the rings at completely an angle. If you didn't want them hanging off the box, look how inky my fingers are today. But I'm okay with it kind of going a little bit hanging off the edge here. And again, I'm eyeballing the circle of the planet to center that on the box front here. All right, so next we're gonna do a little bit of stamping. And we're gonna do the sentiment, your stellar. Actually, I'll just use this little scrap piece I've got here off to the side, because we're just gonna fussy cut this one. There we go. Scissors. And I'm just gonna follow this uh, sentiment here and just cut as best I can in a straight line. The less times you have to use the scissor action with the scissors, the straighter your line will be. There we go. So you're stellar. And then let's create a little faux bow with the uh, 2022 to 2024 in color tw Baker's twine. On the sample I created for tonight, I used the Orchid Oasis, but I think I'm going to use the Tahitian Tide because I love that color with this. So I'm just doing kind of like a zigzag here. So we've got the tail and a loop. And I'll come up with another loop and a tail. I'm not tying any knots or anything. I'm going to make the tails a little bit extra long there. So essentially, I want to show you what it looks like in the middle. It's just, the th they're just kind of zigzagged. Let me put them, I'm gonna put a glue dot behind it first and then show you that a little bit closer. Just got my roll of glue dots here. I'm taking the center of the faux bow and just sticking it right into a glue dot, like so. Now you'll be able to see how we're kind of zigzagged there. So no knots, it's literally just like this S or zigzag shape, I don't know what you would call that. So the glue dot's gonna hold the center together there. And I'm just gonna take the take your pick tool, take your pick tool and pick up that center. And I'm not putting them quite top to bottom, but maybe at like a one o'clock, one o'clock, seven o'clock, if we're looking at it like a clock, and just gonna pop that down. Okay, because our sentiment's gonna go just right over that that. I love that. Um, got that idea. Well, I've used that a couple of times before, but that's one of the samples in the catalog uses that. So now I'm going to take the mini dimensionals and I'm going to refrain from putting any in the center of our sentiment piece. Just on the outer edges, just so I don't stick dimensionals to the twine. I'm just doing it like that, okay? And then we'll pop that right over our little faux bow. I'm gonna trim the tails a bit. I got too much adhesive on my scissors. They're not cutting well, there we go. And then what do we need but a piece of bling. And again, we'll grab a large rhinestone and just pop that right up there on our green planet. And there we have our half sheet gift box. Now again, this measures three 
by three by one. So you'll be able to throw in all kinds of treats. You could throw a handful of Hershey's nuggets or Hershey's kisses. I know you guys will figure out um, fun treats to fit in there. It's just a good handy size to have for treats. It will not fit a gift card in case anybody has asked that yet. <laughs> but that is one of tonight's projects. Where are my cards? Oh, right here. What do we make, the blue one or the pink one tonight? We made the blue one. Here we go. So here are the projects we made for tonight using the Stargazing Suite, which I have fallen in love with, with all the bright colors. Love the holographic uh, specialty paper with it as well. So why don't we go ahead and jump into tonight's q and I'm looking forward to that. Let me get that teed up really quickly here. All right. Cynthia's first. Have I, I, I had a wonderful vacation. Thank you for asking. I have not done any slimline cards um, yet, but thank you for the suggestion. I know there's lots of great inspiration out there, especially on Pinterest with slimline. And there's all kinds of different sizes. I don't think there's particularly any one set size for slimline. You can see kind of bigger ones and smaller ones. I think the standard slimline fit into, is it the number 10 envelopes, I think? I'm looking to Brian like he knows some line cards. Um, but yeah, Pinterest is a great resource, but I haven't done any yet. Great question. How do demonstrators qualify for the trip? So there's a couple of different ways you can uh, earn what are called uh, flex points or incentive trip points. They used to be called flex points. It can be any combination of things or one or two. There's three different ways that you can earn points. One is through sales. One is through team members qualifying and one is through team members promoting. So three different ways to get there. Sort of the fastest way to get there um, is to have a combination of the three. But again, less than 1% of demonstrators earn the incentive trip, um, but there's multiple different ways to get there. So great question. <laughs> That is not legit, Elaine. So if you see any, uh, so she's asking, I see the mail order company, and I'm not going to say it out loud on the live stream, is selling quite a few older Stampin' Up! stamps and dies. Is this legit? They're really cheap. If they're really cheap, it's likely not Stampin' Up! products. If you happen to see anything that is current product, be sure to report that to Stampin' Up! infringements at stampinup.com. So I do recommend that you don't purchase those items, so don't support those that are counterfeit, counterfeiting products. It's your own. It's our own small way of not supporting that. Um, it was actually Royal Caribbean, Linda. She was asking if it's a Norwegian cruise line that we were on. It was Royal Caribbean on the ship, the Anthem of the Seas. Now, I've only taken two cruises. Um, you've taken a few, but um, this was the biggest cruise ship that we've ever been on. And I will say that I think I put in the caption of one of my photos... We were on the ship for seven days, and I still think day seven I was still getting lost because it's just a massive ship with so many things to do. Um, I mean, we could eat as much as we wanted to eat. There was lots of bars and restaurants. There We watched um, We Will Rock You, the Queen musical. Oh, it was so good. We watched that on the last night. There was bingo. There was all kinds of entertainment, so it was a great, it was a great ship. I know all the cruise lines. They know how to do it right, so... Can you take me on your next adventure? Just kidding. Glad you had a great time. Thank you, Ramona. I wish I could fit all of you in my suitcase. We were chuckling. Brian only packed in a backpack. No, it was a big backpack, right? Like a hiking backpack. And then I just had a backpack and a carry-on. So um, we've had lots of experience packing, but somehow we made it without needing to check bags. Was there any paper craft? Was there any paper crafting on the cruise, or it was vacation time only? Um, Stampin' Up actually did a presentation for us at the general session. We got to see a sneak peek of some products from the upcoming mini catalog. That's going to be from September to December. Um, so that was really exciting, and I had I totally missed that there were samples of new mini catalog products in the hospitality suite. I was so focused on the candy and saying hi to demonstrators that I I looked at the samples, but it didn't register that it was new product. But they did do a stamp, some stamping presentations for us. There wasn't any um, specific crafting time, but I know that a lot of demonstrators participated in a swap. 
So um, it was fun. But we tried really hard to just have it be vacation time for us. It's been a crazy few months here. So um, we just kind of enjoyed spending time together and relaxing and eating and sleeping. And <laughs> so... Will I be making a wedding card for this weekend? Myrtle, great question. Um, if I have time. <laughs> the last few weeks as I've been literally traveling from weekend after weekend after weekend. I haven't found a lot of extra crafting time. If I don't make it for this weekend, we will make one. I'll definitely make one to send to the, the happy couple for sure. <laughs> Waste not, want not. Which would you prefer, B? <laughs> the plates. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, let's see. My cutter is tearing the paper even with a new blade. Am I doing something wrong? Thank you. Um, check a couple of things, Nancy, on your paper trimmer. It's possible that you might have some paper fibers stuck in the cutting groove. Sometimes that can affect a new blade. Um, you shouldn't be having problems if that's cleaned out. Another thing you could try, although I don't think you need to, you could try um, taking a tin foil ball and tapping the cutter into it just to sharpen it a little bit or in case there's any adhesive gunk on it that's preventing it from cutting a clean cut. The other thing too is if it's the, the current Stampin' Up! paper trimmer, try not to press down too hard. It works really well with just a light touch while you're cutting. So try a couple of those things and see if you've got some success there. Joan, I will not have a template, but I will do a project sheet so you have the measurements. I'll take a photo of the card. Um, I might do a template, but it'll be really simple vertical lines. Um, when it's a sort of a fun fold like that, it's kind of difficult for me to do. It's not difficult to do templates, but they don't look like much. Um, the measurements are really probably what you're after. So yes, I'll do a project sheet for that. Give me until the end of the day tomorrow to do project sheets for both the fun fold card and the box. And I'll post those links to those um, project sheets in the description. Ultimately, it will make it to my blog. I'm trying to get back onto a cadence with that. Um, but in the meantime, I do want to make sure that you've got measurements and things. So I'll post those uh, project sheets in the description of this video uh, before the end of the day tomorrow, which is June 1st. Okay. Oh, a question for Greg. I don't know if he answered this. Is it Greg Gregors or Brother Pixie? Well, he goes by all of them. <laughs> um, my nickname for him is Gregors, but um, Gregory is the name he was born with. But yeah, Greg Gregors. I don't know if I call him Brother Pixie, but you guys do, which I love. Ooh, can you please tell me what size those circle dies are? So the one I used tonight, Rose, is... Uh, ooh, my my metal ruler stuck to my magnet. All right, let's see. The one I used tonight is two and a half in diameter. Let me tell you really quickly the rest of them. So that was two and a half. Then we've got like two and an eighth. Uh, one and three quarters. And these are kind of estimates rows, but let's see. One and three quarters. One and a half, one and an eighth, and then it looks like three quarters. So really great circle sizes in that set. Do I have a gift card for boys? <clears throat> you did? Awesome. Thank you. Oh, I got that one from Rose. Okay. Uh, all right. Awesome. I am jet lagged, Ramona. Around this time of night, I get really tired and have heavy eyes, but um, I've been trying to stay up to my normal bedtime and then been sleeping really well, sleeping in my own bed. The uh, cruise ship was really, what would you call it? It was rolling. It was going from like side to side. I looked up what, what the terms are. It was rolling. The seas were pretty rocky. Um, in fact, one of the four port stops we weren't able to dock, they tried to put the um, bridge out, but the two motors on the bridge burned out while they were trying to do that. I think probably because the current in the water. So then they were planning to tender all of us to the port and they took the first tender boat out and realized that the current was much too strong. So, um, yeah, it felt really good to get on land, even though I still had some sea legs and then really good to sleep in my own bed. But yeah, jet lag is slowly dissipating. Hopefully by Friday we'll be good. Did I plan to have the Q&A, uh, let's see, match my eyes. What does that mean? 
I'm not sure what you mean. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I may, I'm tired, but I'm sure it was just a little bit of a mistype. Uh, let's see. Would the holographic paper be good for cutting out sentiments to mimic foiling? I think it actually would be good for that, Paula. Absolutely. Now you're going to, it'll, they'll have, there'll be a little bit of dimension to it different than foiling just because it's kind of got a cardstock backing, but absolutely. I think it would be beautiful to use sentiments for foiling or sentiments with the holographic paper. It'd be really pretty. Let's see. I actually didn't do any swaps, Majenka. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I didn't swap. I This was purely a vacation trip for me, so I didn't want to have to do any work ahead of time. Um, but I think if you sort of keep your eye out on social media, demonstrators are posting some of the sample boards and things. Um, so you'll see lots of inspiration out there from the incentive trip. I can't think of what the name of the hashtag was. Something like hashtag SU incentive trip, I think. You'll be able to see um, lots of photos and pictures. And again, I shared um, photos from our trip on my Facebook page as well as my personal page. It's the same photos. So uh, be sure to check those out. We had a lot of, we had a good time. So, all right, we have reached the end of the Q&A. You guys are awesome. Um, thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you enjoyed tonight's projects and any tips or tricks I taught you along the way, please remember to like and subscribe and ring that bell so you get notified when I have new videos that helps us here on YouTube. We will be live again next Wednesday. That will be June 7th. I think that's the date, um, Wednesday, June 7th at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, as always. Tomorrow starts the Designer Series paper sale, 15% off select Designer Series papers in the annual catalog, and I'm pretty sure Stargazing is one of them, the one we use tonight. There's also a starter kit special where you can get an additional $30 in product, so $155 for $99. We do have online exclusives coming in July, but there's a pre-order period for demonstrators uh, in June, so that's something that you can add to a starter kit as well if you don't want to wait until July. Thank you so much for joining me. Hello and thank you to all my replay warriors. Have a wonderful and blessed weekend or week, I should say, over the weekend. And I will see you next Wednesday. Take good care. Thanks. Bye.